Hi, welcome to the Louise Janetta Gallery and Studio in Buxton in Derbyshire. I've been videoing making a book. Um, I've got a project on at the moment where I want to make a seascape book. And first of all, I've done a little sketchbook so that I can learn how to do it properly. I've done some book binding and I did it at uni a bit. But when I'm in the studio, I don't have all the equipment. So I'm using things that aren't necessarily made for book binding and can be a little bit problematic, but it's a learning curve. This was a bit of a hassle, but it came out all right in the end. I'm just allowing it to dry so that the spine is really fixed to the back of the book. What's really good about this video is that you see me making mistakes and you see how cack-handed you can be. One of the main ways of learning is through the mistakes and through seeing why you do such and such so that it works properly. And also, like, ways of negating it, ways of overcoming problems that you might have. For instance, this is a wallpaper covering onto the cardboard the cover of the book. And it's quite thick and not very playable, so it's quite difficult to get stuck down and quite difficult to make all the edges neat and so on. But it looks like I've done it in the end. I hope you enjoy it, I hope you get something out of it and if you have any questions please put them in the comment section below because I'll address them and even do you a little video, um, even show you mistakes and things that I've made. I'm mucky um, because I've been doing lots of other things at the same time while I've been waiting for this to dry. I can't just wait for it to dry obviously. Okay, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. All the best. In order to do the book binding video, I had to do loads and loads of bits and pieces, loads of bits of paper. So I had stuff all over the place that I was drying and preparing and experimenting with. That's a lovely piece of wallpaper. And I actually printed, no, I painted that and then printed it onto paper. So here's my book binding station. And paints and everything. I got everything everywhere because I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. I'm getting ready to do the big book. A big book on sea. So I'm going to start with a series of papers that I've painted and I've had a really nice time painting both sides of these papers so that when I fold it in half I've got some really nice signatures to go in the book and on top of these I'm going to put little bits and pieces envelopes and things in which to put um, little trinkets and so on about the sea and pictures that I've done about the sea and the whole thing's going to have this lovely feel to it as well you know solid papery transient and precious I've got some lovely textures this is a wallpaper painted these are collaged bits and pieces so this will be one sheet I do like the lovely dull browns and that and because it's going to have things stuck on it um, these won't be so obvious the browns but of course the seas have got those beautiful browns and on the other side is these lovely splatters with scratches through it I make a lot of my own textures so there is one just with gesso and a rolling pin that had squares on it just from craft suppliers and I just did it arbitrarily all over and then painted it in blue and this one is another piece of wallpaper with some really beautiful marks on it so that's going to be really nice as an envelope I need some more of this I really love the colours that it's that's come out on it as well and there's some beautiful blue stuff that I'm going to use it's taken me a good while to get all these papers together and the pieces of paper are all different sizes so I'm going to decide on a size and then start cutting the papers down to size so I've got a rectangle that you would fold in half to make a sh sheet four sides of paper and a sort of sh size and shape that I can deal with basically at this point so I'm now going to cut the papers down to about the same size. I can trim them all properly when it comes to the end but I need to know the size I'm going to have, what I'm going to use in it and how I'm going to present the things in it and the size of the cover that I'm going to put on it. 
the signatures for the little booklet have just been made out of odds and sods left over from the bigger book and I will just sort of roughly even them up so that they're fairly central so one two three and then obviously the repeated so you're going to decide where you put your little envelopes and nice little bags for your beautiful secret things and then you have to glue them without getting glue on everything else might be worth marking ever so slightly where you're going to put stuff you want to get your book binding glue and just touch it along the top but with not too much so it doesn't spread all over the place when it's drying there's a hair in that mark it almost put it central or wherever you want to put it so that's that one and then get your inner and this time place a piece of scrap paper inside so that you can glue it up without getting glue on the inside of it and just put enough I mean don't get it all over the edges like I have I have to admit I am not the tidiest of people with this sort of thing okay and then get that over where you've put your little flap in the middle it had to come down and here you can just move it ever so slightly that isn't in fact that nice oh well I'll do okay and then just press it down and you can sit that underneath a book to let it dry and any bits of glue you can wipe off with a cloth because all this is acrylics if you've got a little bit of glue on there you can get a slightly dampened cloth and just lift it off there you go okay so now I'm going to put that to one side with a weight on it so that was for that one uh, there's another little one there's the other signature with where I want this second little pouch to be so again you can just glue up the actual lid of it just run some glue over pop it on where you're gonna where you want it get your little spare piece of paper pop it into your envelope or your pouch and glue up the edges make sure there's enough glue on there but not so much that when it's pressed down it's going to ooze out because obviously that will glue the pouch up take your paper out and then you can slip that into underneath where you've made your pouch and it should just sit over the top nicely there you go and then when it's closed down just make sure everything's working I'm just going to get rid of any extra glue on the edges because this is all acrylic so it's not going to disrupt the actual pigment on the paper just make sure everything works nicely and then put that piece to one side under a weight to make sure it glues flat so put the two pieces on a board I'm going to put a piece of clean card over the top of it and then I will put something heavy on top of that and just let it dry for 20 minutes <laughs> right so now you've got one two three more signatures which I am going to decide where my actual envelopes are going to go and I shall also show you how I make the holes so I've got three envelopes and one of them I absolutely love the back of I like the back of that envelope there's a bit showing over there I'm going to just trim that off so that envelope I'm going to face downwards and I might put him in the middle there so you've got your papers you center them as best you can and you try and keep them all, all so all is on the crease the central crease you've decided where you want to put your envelope I want it there in the middle so you open up your envelope keeping the creases matched up and you measure the middle 
of your piece of paper? About 14 over 7 onto the crease and you mark your crease. Right, then you get your measuring stick and you've marked off the measurements that you're going to pop in. You central the middle mark and then you mark all your marks in across. One, two, three, four, five, and then I want one more because I have got to come back up at the right point. You'll see when I do it. Right, this is where it's a good idea to have a paper clip or a clamp or Kirby grips or something in order to keep everything in place. Then you start making sure you don't put one through the central mark that you made in the beginning because you don't want one there. And you just mark it. Oops, you see that's all twisted. I think. No, the whole thing twisted, so that's okay. So you do need to put paper clips on it to hold all the pieces of paper together, but you just punch through all your marks. And it doesn't matter that some of them are outside your envelope. Right. Then you get your needle and your waxed linen thread. And you want enough really to do a few of these. So one, two, three, four lengths of it. About. Thread your needle right. It's a good, good idea to clamp them together if you can, just to stop them from moving too much. That's, that's a good one. Right. So all the holes are lined up. You start from the back, you go in through the first one, and you leave yourself, you leave yourself an amount. Come back out the next one. Pulling that tight, but leaving that out, and onto the next one, and it should just go through this whole lot. Yeah, there you go. Now this is where you get your tape. Right, you've got lengths of this tape to go into this like so, so that when you pull the thread through, that's fixed with that stick. Four lengths of this tape. Now this isn't normal tape, I'll tell you the name of it, I can't remember it at the moment. Two, three, four. So, move it out of the way. Right, take the step along and come out at your next point. You want lengths long enough to go down the side of it, I'll show you at the end. Through the next hole. And pull that one tight. Now these holes I've made pretty irregular. I'm, I'm, they're not going to show when the book is finished. And I've made them irregular because I needed to make sure that all the things that I've put in there are going to be fixed down. I've got five tapes to go in there. So your tapes are being sewn down. And you leave them, say this is the... You leave these long enough to be able to put in the other signatures. Okay, keep going. Down through the hole. And put your tape in. Up again. Up again, down through your hole. And put your tape in. Make sure that's not twisted. Put your tape down. And then, so it's lying flat, like so. And then last of all, up through the last hole. So, all your tapes are down, like so. Now, you just go back on it, so you pull these tight. I think that one should have been t tied down as well, so let me just tie that down. And then pull this tight, so everything's nice and tight, and then stitch it back on itself. One, I'm going 
going to put two in. And two. Right, then you get your next signature. Right, the next signature, so going from through holes from the top, so that's in place, open it up. I'm going to pin them all together so that I can manage them a bit better. There we go. So up through the top and back. Now I'm just going to tie these together. I mean, I think you should be there. You should be able to go into the neighbouring stitch, lift it without going through the tape. And just tie, put a knot in it. So one, two. Right now, continue on your line. It's all nice and taped. To, uh, put it together. So go through the holes that you've made. get that one back again so you're just going over it there and back through the last hole right take this out because it's stopping it from sitting properly get it all nice and tight tie it back on itself one and two and I'm also going to tie it to the neighbouring stitch just to tighten everything together. Let's just see if I can get it to hold itself together a bit more. You see, this is when I make a mess. It's starting to look a mess, isn't it? But I mean, it'll be alright. Because that's all going to be bound. Okay, so now your envelope can be glued up. And they'll just be the pouch. They're all nice, they sit nicely. There's just that problem, I don't like this problem here. But the rest is nice. And again, I'll have to see what happens when I actually put the cover on. There's one more to go, which I have in fact stitched. I'll have to make sure I've got it the right way up. So the pouch is there, it's there, I've stitched, so, because I did it before, before I realised quite what was happening, so I can just thread these all through, tighten up the stitches, it's not tight, right, I should be able to just pull it all through, so let's see, bring it all through, one, two, because it was knotted at the other end. Three, and come on. Oh, it's that's the wrong one. There. Oh, you see that's why. Why is that loose? It shouldn't be that loose. I'm talking to myself, beg your pardon. Oh, and I missed the tape. Put the tape through. And I want equal distance. So I want the tape like that. The same on each side, like so. Still, that's not very tight. So let's see, take that one that way, pull it as tight as I can across here. I think that's probably the problem is I'm not getting it tight enough as I go from one stitch to the other, one book to the other. 
one uh, signature to the other. Oops. Go on, in you go. Let's just see what that looks like. No, it's still the same, you see, there's big gaps. I don't quite know why. Whether it's because that's how it's going to sit, you know, it's got to have that bit of leeway. I think that I will sew onto the other side. I'll thread that and sew it and knot it. So, right, so that's knotted there. But I'm also going to pick up other parts of the book and just see if I can get it to sit closer to one another. Oops, Daisy, I didn't want that. So you end up with your signatures sewn together and these tapes hanging over. And the idea is just to get a tiny bit of water and wet the tapes so that the filaments of the tape separate and you can lay them flat onto the inner sheet of your book. So I'm just going to put a bit of uh, glue in there as well and get those lying nice and flat on my book and then I'm going to leave it to dry. So the idea is that they, you're making them as inconspicuous, inconspicuous as possible for when you put the next bit onto the inside of the last page and first page and of the book actual cover. Okay, so you can leave them to one side to dry and you've got this lovely little book coming on with these beautiful little envelopes. And it's the same with the envelope that you did before, same as you did before. Just trying to find my bit of scrap paper. So you put your scrap paper inside, put your sheet down, glue just on the inside of your thing, and same on this one, and then the inside of your envelope. Just put that down and put that over. Take your sheet out and let it dry. There, that's lovely. So it'll end up like that. It'll flip through the book and it'll be there. So that's one. Because I'll put all this under some weight in a minute. And there's another one. Just bung some on the inside. One. The same on this one. Two. I'm just going to cut off that extra one there as well. There you go. And then again, if there's any wetness uh, glue on there, you can get it off at this stage. And two. Um, there's one of your little pouches that you did before. So you can put stuff in there. another envelope so I'll just pop that down and I should really use a clean piece of paper there one oops two I mean you can see I am not the tidiest of people am I but I seem to get away with it so take off any excess I mean it's okay on this you couldn't do that if you were doing some sort of valuable book binding Thing. I've got muck on there now, but still I reckon I could get that off. There, you see, look, and it's fine. Right, so, last one, and there's your last little pouch that you can pop things in. Now it's just a question of leaving it all to dry. Um, you can also clamp this up, glue it, and put some tape on the back of that. So I'm just going to get rid of all these extras. Okay, I'm doing this without much equipment, so the tapes have stuck down. I get my glue and I rub it along the top where the sewing has been done. And I work the glue slightly into, between the sheets or between the signatures but obviously you don't want it 
soaking down between the signatures because that's going to glue the papers together but you want it so that it's filling the gaps a bit and now this has then got to be left clamped you would put it between two sheets two pieces of wood and clamp it down but I've not got those so I'm using these and then I'll leave it overnight so I'm just running the clamps really close to the edge I've got a really good one here so I'm going to use this one in the middle because it's really actually they're all good so they're just bulldog clips and I'm just making sure that the papers are all nice and tight together and there's glue in them and I'm going to leave that overnight to help bind this to the spine when it's finished and to help bind everything together I've got a lovely very rag rich piece of paper here cotton rag rich and I'm just going to stick it down over this back bit but first of all I'm also going to put a little tag on it let me see if I've got something so something like that I'm gonna fold over and put at the top and it just neatens it all off like so so we'll do that at each end so that when it's glued down it looks like that I don't see how people keep it on there though but I am going to do that this is because I've left my paintbrush over in the house which is across the way so none of this is going to show I don't get how they actually that's sticking really quickly that's with the neutral pH adhesive the Linico nice glue really nice glue right so you've got those two pieces over the ends leave it to dry and then you get your nice piece of cotton rag to go inside it cut it to lengths cut off excess paste on the glue and then stick it on And just leave it to dry to make the cover I have cut out some cards just a little bit bigger than the book so a couple of millimeters bigger and longer than the ends and a spine that's the same size as the spine of the combined papers you glue it up so that you leave a gap so it's probably a good idea to mark the middle of this paper um, I've brought quite a lot, I want quite a lot over because I have got short bits on the inside cover so it's going to go to there. I could add a slip there. I'll see what happens in any case. So you just glue up the back of your boards with your PVA glue. You can apply this with a foam roller, it's quicker. I've just got this out now and I'm also going to put it around the sides I've used a lovely piece of wallpaper to cover this with I'll show you it in a minute when I fold it over right, I'm also going to bung some on the edges there just because I really like it all nice and snug I'm going to pop that down making sure it's nice and straight against the edges one uh, glue this one up pop it down leaving a gap and then the last one spread it nice and evenly over the whole thing do the sides 
pop it down, making sure it's nice and straight again. Right now, now you can check it over. Right, now, <laughs> all you have to do is make sure that it's got room to bend. Nice, now it needs to be more. Okay. Right, on. right so you've got it down. Then you cut, you cut into the corners. No, that's wrong. Oh yeah, that's right, you go in, you go into the corner, but then you also cut off the little edge. So when you pull this over, it sits inside there. So I've got that one wrong. So that will show. Okay, right, I'm going to do it. Glue up this, don't get glue all over your board. Pull it over and that can either go down the side or actually if it's thin enough you can bend it back on itself. Now this because this is just a question of keeping it down until it's stuck. all lovely and flat on the other side as well. Okay, so that's that side. Let's do the other side. So I'm gonna get that, cut that in. Right, so you go into the corner. leaving just about a millimetre away, you know, two millimetres away, and you can cut off that, and you can cut off this. Now this is wallpaper, but um, if it were book binding material, it's a lot easier to use, but this is a bit more solid. So, well, cut in about a millimetre away, and cut the excess off. Right, glue it up. Right, I'm gonna fold in the edges of these so it's there's a neat edge and pull it over. Now this again, this wallpaper is not responding that well. It's a bit thick, but it's beautiful wallpaper, so I really want it. And again, just work it in. Keep that edge folded down. I mean, I could just trim that all off, actually, because it's going to be covered when I pull this one over. Just let that all come down. I don't want any extra. I'm going to paint this, so it doesn't matter that I'm getting it a bit mucky. It's freezing cold in the studio, and I can't put the fires on because they make a noise. So I <laughs> it just gets such a runny nose. Right, okay, now this end, so this one you would normally just do to the edge, but because the book, when it's down, the inside sheet is going to be quite short, I'm going to make sure I've got enough to cover that, so I can trim it, get rid of excess, stick that down, and then this will fold in like so, fold in like so, Get, I mean, I could really cut that down and then stick down like that. So if I, this is really thick, heavy paper, wallpaper. It's almost like fabric. Um, and I don't like that edge. So I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna trim all these down. And get rid of all the excess, because the fabric isn't going to Fray. And then I'm going to trim this down to the edge. Trim that down to the edge and then see what it looks like folded over. 
Yeah, I mean, I prefer that, you know, when that comes down. So I just have to make sure I glue it right down. Get rid of any extra there. And again, I think you can go at a bit of an angle to there. And fold it down. May have been better putting this end down first. So let's just see if I can do that. Put this end down first. And here goes. So taking off all the excess that down pull it nice and tight and then get this down again because again all this I can mess with afterwards because I'm going to paint it you know it doesn't matter that it's a bit messy oh and I think I'll take that into a little cup so now I'll take that into a little corner pleat as well so it's like that there that's nice and neat dirty with my dirty hands and all the glue but it doesn't matter because it'll all be painted right same here fold that over and in like so glue down that's going to glue down fold that over and in and then fold it over Right, good clean. Right, this cleaning depends on what you're using, doesn't it? I mean, if it's lovely and delicate, I wouldn't do this, obviously. But with this stuff, it's all pretty robust, so I get the chance to have a good old clean up in between. And I must admit, I tend to go for robust stuff because I know what my personality is. You know, I am heavy handed. And I've just got to do this side before it's too late. See, look, the paper's. So, I want that folded over. over. I'm going to take that off again. Then get that stuck down there. Making sure that's going to go over nicely. Too much, too much there. Trim it all off. And then bring this down. nice little corner, pull it down and that corner has been cut by mistake so it'll look okay in the end because you won't notice it's been cut. Pull it tight over, oh that's too much bulk there because look it's gonna pull over so let me just get some of that bulk out. Oops. Oops. And wash your scissors, obviously. Get off the PVA glue. There's a reason why people use book binding fabric, because it's so much more responsive to the process. But I want this lovely wallpaper. If this doesn't glue down at this point, I can mess with it afterwards and put some more glue on it. I just want it to, you know, settle down. So I'll put a book on top of it, a weight on top of it, and put it on top of my my radiator. Right, I'm going to put it over with a weight on top of it now. I couldn't get the corners to stick down properly, not as neatly as I could wanted them to. So I have actually put some more glue on there. And again, it is getting mucky because I'm not being very careful. Because I know I'm going to be painting this. But now I'm going to clamp those corners down because I can't get them down nice and neatly. So you've got to protect your papers from 
any indentations that you make with your clamps. So it doesn't matter on the inside, that's holding those pieces down. I've got a paper clip type thing on that side. Um, the corners I've pushed down so they're nice and neat and tight and that's going to be the result when it's finished. And this paper has got a sheen to it. Um, it's almost like a satin finish so I'm going to paint that with pearlescent paints, acrylic paints and it'll all go together as a nice little sea book. I've also cut a little strip of calico. Um, it's just fabric I had left over for bits and pieces. Um, I've also used curtain lining sometimes. This is so that you don't just rush out and buy every single book binding specialist equipment that you can find or that they say you require. And I'm just going to reinforce the spine with this. I don't want the, I want to make sure the frayed edges are not hiding and are hidden. And I'm putting it within the edges of what I know is going to go on top of it. So that you can't see it, but it, it's reinforcing the spine. So let me just centre that a bit. There we go. Again, stick that down. But not, you know, give it the, at this point, make sure you can still bend it. Right now, let's put all that to one side to dry. So I've managed to get the wallpaper down onto the boards nicely. I've put the panel in to reinforce the spine and the whole thing moves nicely and sits together nicely. The next bit is to put the book in. And the, oh, and the book goes down like this. You, you get the last pages and they get stuck down. And then you end up with something like that. But before I do that, so that when these are stuck down, there's a nice neat edge. I'm going to paint the booklet. And the whole idea is it's lovely and sea-like with this already with this beautiful texture that's on there. I hope you can see it. I'm just going to get a piece of newsprint or old paper and then put some pearlescent paints on it just for some fun. I've got some leftover dark blue and I'm just going to pull it through and see what happens. I mean, again, it's seeing what the actual stuff you're using behaves like, isn't it? Because I don't really know how it behaves. Here's a lovely pearlescent blue. I'm just going to pull it through see what happens. It's how the paint goes on the actual wallpaper, on the mediums you use as well, isn't it? Because I've not used it before, I don't really know how it's going to go. I can see that the water is being repelled a bit. So I'm going to get some of my acrylic flow midi medium here. So I'm just going to put that in because, as I said before, if you've got too much water in your acrylic, the water actually stops it from binding. So you need to have enough for it to bind onto the substructure. I mean... Go for it, enjoy it, I think. I absolutely love greens and browns and things in the sea. So I'm just gonna put in some greens. I do another video showing you how to do seagulls and seascapes with strings and water and uh, wallpapers and mixed papers and threads. So you could have a look at that one if you want to because it's very similar to this. So I want it to you know, not be too literal, although it is because it's blue, to sort of have an abstract look about it too. There we go. Now let's just see how that dries, because I can see that the wallpaper is coming through and I don't want it to really. I want it to look blue blue or green green. So I might have to put another coat on that, but that's lovely as is as well. Make sure you get the edges covered. And then we'll do the inside once that's dry. So I did the inside, the outside, and I'm just quickly going to bung in some stuff on the inside. It doesn't matter about getting it over the edges, because I'm going to cover it with the book covers, the book sheets, like I showed you before. So I'm just getting the paint on, basically. These are Dala and Rowney FW inks, pearlescent inks. 
I decided not to worry too much about the wallpaper showing through because it looks a bit like uh, foam on the tops. So I'm leaving that now. And again, it's allowing the actual uh, substrate, the, the wallpaper, to have its own voice, which I really like. So it influences, as well as everything else. So it's all sort of really interactive. Let me just quickly show you the other side. The other side's like so. And you can see these lovely little bubbles through it. Okay. Just leave this to dry now. Okay, so only that's going to show, and only the outside of that's going to show. Right, let's bring it back in front of the heater to dry. So you end up with something like this, all painted. It's a bit bent because it's warmed up from the heater, but I'll put it in a press when I've finished, and it'll come out flat. So I've got that for the outside, and for the inside I've got a series of little envelopes, all the pages, and then I've started to embellish it a little bit. And into some of the envelopes I've put some images. Uh, that is some of those pressed leaves you can just get from art suppliers. And I've stuck them onto paper and then painted them. And they look like leaves floating on the top of water, so it's just on the water theme. Uh, what else have I got? Oops, I bent that over. I've got a couple of little bits of things that look like metal. So I've put them in there, sort of flotsam of jetsam of what's found around the coast. Rusted pieces and so on. What's in this one? Oh, and another lovely little piece that feels like a bit... Oh, I don't know what that is, really. Uh, it could be the sand. It could be a piece of metal. It could be a piece of wood. It's just those gorgeous textures you find. So I've filled the book with... I'm going to fill the book with bits and pieces like that. Right, last thing to do is to get your book and glue it into the spine and then glue the edges. I'm just going to get my Linico glue and then I just run it down the spine. And sit that into there making sure that you're leaving the same sort of space top and bottom you can check that with your pages just make sure it looks nice yeah that's fine that's it right so that's gone in there and then it's do this so get a bit of scrap paper get your last sheet Put it up there and glue your last sheet. So this side makes more sense. Get it nice and even over your, your page. I'm not too thick that it's going to all splurt over the edges. And then line up your book again. Make sure it's all in position. Oops, a daisy. Let's make sure that the other side is, this, is good as well. So, let's make sure that both sides it's not twisted or anything. Can you see? So that goes down and now you know that that side's going to go down nicely too. And do the same with your other side and make sure your paper is free from glue. Get your paper up. And just see, is that on that side? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm just centralising the spine down the, sp the spine of the um, papers to the spine of the cardboard book. Right, nice piece of patterning, but still, just make sure there's enough glue still in that spine. And then do the whole of your sheet again. Right. 
And this whole thing was just my practice run for my proper book. This was done from all the little bits of leftovers just to make sure that I can do it. You know, before I set off on a nice big book, which is going to be more complex, more tricky to do, just because of the size, really. Right, take that out. And get that down. And again, you can just use a wet cloth. With this one, because it's all, you know, it's acrylics, it's not going to move. And the paper's really good, sturdy paper. So you're not going to mess that up either. And this is where you've over... You know, you've got a large area over this end so that you've got that covered. And same with this side. And just make sure everything's actually, you know, going to close and open nicely. And you end up with that. And, that, and I'm going to put this between two pieces of nice card and into my book press. And in fact, <laughs> surprisingly enough, <laughs> that has worked. After all that sort of mess that I made, I went and washed my hands to get them nice again. And I mean, it feels really nice. It's got a lovely feeling. The actual texture of the wallpaper gives us a lovely texture of rippling water. So it's really synesthetic in that it's touch, haptic and sight. Um, so it's all worked. I don't know how... See, it's coming away from the sides there. I think I may have... Yeah, that's right. I've, you see, it's really good, this, because I've done this as a, almost like a sketch of the first thing. You've got to really make sure that it goes right the way back, sits inside it nicely. I mean, even, say, get something blunt so that you push that into those edges, because otherwise... It's not going. It's going to pull every single time it opens. Right. Let me just see. Again, I still. Let me see. Why isn't that going down very well? You want it to go down when it's closed, don't you? Because that's. Oh no! It's when it's open. It's at its full stretch, isn't it? So. So work it down into there when it's open, because otherwise the papers will rip, won't they? You see, again, the other thing that I'm doing is I'm using papers that aren't really meant for... They're not designed for this purpose. If I was using papers that were bookbinding papers, everything would be much, much easier. Everything would be much, much smoother. Now, that's... Why is that doing that? It's because that isn't sticking down, isn't it? And they, they make it look so simple in the bookbinding um, tutorials. When, when you're using all these different products that we've sort of got lying around the place, it's a really different issue. There are issues that they might not actually come across. I mean, for instance, that almost needs to be dried like that rather than closed because I don't know whether it'll open. If I dry it closed, I don't know whether it'll have the flexibility to open. And also, I want this spine to dry against that spine. Whereas if I pull it tight, it's not going to. Actually, that's not too bad. Maybe that is okay. I almost feel like I need to put a clamp in there to hold that spine in more than anything. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to get a nice strip of card. Right, a strip of card like that and then I want the same again the other side I've got these are mount cards because I've got loads of mount cards left over mount card, that'll be enough there we go perfect so get my little clamps like so these are just from the um, pound shop now I really want that spine to fix really tight glue really tight against the spine so I'm going to put my clamp in let's make sure it's all nicely lined up put my clamp in that so I don't tie it too tight at this point get the other one in first as well so I've got luckily I have two Right. 
Okay, so now I've got the spine clamped tightly down and hopefully that'll dry flat so that the book will open. Oh, terrible for fiddling at this point. Just making sure that all the edges are nice and stuck down. And that's it. I'll show you when it's finished. So there's the book in the end. I was really pleased with it. It came out a load better than I thought and it was really good to sort of learn through the process. There are things that I would do differently. For instance, I would pull this flap over on top of the edges so that you don't get this. It would be much neater if it was just flat against there and I'll do that next time. Um, when I glued down the signatures, I didn't understand why you did it because I was so worried that glue would seep through between the signatures and because I did it so clumsily without proper clamps and so on, of course some did and I didn't really know what I was doing in the process. I'd be much more aware of how you apply the glue next time. But generally, it's come out really nicely. It looks the part, it looks nice and professional. It's got a lovely feel to it. And I can't wait to start putting stuff in it. Thanks for watching and I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, could you please remember to like and subscribe. The whole exercise was a learning process. So you were learning through the process, through actually doing it. And there were questions I had, like the gaps between the signatures when I put them together, when I'd sewn them together. And then you realise why they stick them all together in that way. I'll, I'll put the little picture up. And you realise why they have the clamps, which I'm going to make, make sure I make. And I'm just going to use two pieces of wood with a screw bar going through it and nuts and bolts to tighten it up. And also, like, I was very dubious about smearing glue all over the end of the signatures where the sewing was but in fact it doesn't penetrate between the pages too much so it was a real learning process how much glue you put it on how you apply it so as to not allow it to seep through between the sheets of paper and that's what the clamp is for when you go through the process and you actually use the equipment like you really get to grips with why you're doing it and it makes much more sense Thanks for watching and I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, could you please remember to like and subscribe.